Welcome back everyone. This is Frank DeMora with the End Times Research Ministry. I want to connect the dots between Bible prophecy and current events for October the 1st, 2013. And yesterday I put up this red flag as well as I did last week because I just had this urgent feeling again. And when I get this feeling, I just put it out about watching these huge earthquakes that are going to be coming to us soon. Now, a week ago, I posted this red flag, as I said, but yesterday I put this up, so let me just read to you what I said there in that post yesterday. And I'm going to just quote myself. I'm sure glad last week that I posted the red flag concerning more of these strong earthquakes coming. And today, there was another one of the very strong quakes. In yesterday's update, I showed you the earthquake that happened in the Kalmatic Islands. And this is the information I put up the flag, a 6.7 earthquake that hit there. And that obviously was yesterday's news on September the 30th. And today, if you haven't been to my site yet, there was another one of these earthquakes. And again, this was another earthquake that registered the same as it did yesterday in a different location, another 6.7 earthquake. This, my friends, both of these earthquakes are huge earthquakes. So keep your eyes on the news because the Lord's words are coming to pass and we are seeing many earthquakes and we are seeing these big earthquakes and it seems that they're happening faster and faster and of course this would go hand in hand with Mark 13, 8 where the Lord said in the last days the birth pangs signs would be as a woman with birth and so get more intense as the closer we get. Now also... For those of you who come to my site, you know that almost every day I'm posting the prophecy about the birds, fish, and animals dying. There was another case of information about this. 30,000 head of sheep are killed during a storm in northern region in the Uruguay. And also here in the United States, there's another, another report about these large walleye fish found washed up a dead along the lake there in Iowa. So again, almost on a daily basis, we're seeing some kind of news, whether it be the birds, animals, and the fish dying off. Now, back in 2003, I'm going to shift gears here because this is extremely important because we're dealing with one of the prophecies that haven't been fulfilled yet. And that prophecy is going to be the Ezekiel chapter 38 war of one of the main wars that are going to be coming against Israel in the last days. Now, back in the year 2011, I'm going to go to it. This is my December 12, 2011. This is where I talk about the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. He's holding a Bible study. This is what I was saying uh, a couple of years ago. And in that, I put up the, the news for you. I had the actual post here that you can go get it through that link. It says, I'm praying for Israel and for the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who is now starting a Bible study. It is my prayer that Netanyahu find Christ and holds to the prophecies concerning his nation. I hope and pray he reads Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38, which are the prophecies about two wars against Israel, which, has, which hasn't happened yet. And then I just give you the article, and you, as I said, you can go to my website and read that article. But let me go back now, because I'm going to bring you up to date on some of the things that I, I wanted you to see here. So I'm going to go now and play this video that I posted on September the 18th of 2013, where again, a few years into the future now, I talk about the Prime Minister of Israel and these Bible studies. Allies would be the same as attacking uh, Russia. And that in itself could cause the, the Ezekiel chapter 38 war. So everything is coming together. It's emerging all at the same time. Now, if you want, keep a notice here that this, what I'm about to say here, begins at the 34-minute mark where I'm talking about this, the Prime Minister and his Bible study. Same time, and they're the very nations. Now, one thing that I want to point out in ending this video for today is let, I'd like to assure everybody, at least 
at this point, this is what it looks like. The, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, has been studying the Bible. And I'm pretty sure, I can't prove this, but if you're studying the Bible, and especially if you're the leader of Israel, and you know about prophecies that pertain to your nation, it would behoove the Prime Minister to understand everything he could possibly understand about what's going to happen in Israel to his people, because the Lord has already shown it to us. And so many of you may not know this, but I did post this before, that Benjamin Netanyahu uh, has put the nuke talk aside, if you can believe that. I mean, this is one of the major issues around the world. But he's put it aside for what? Take a look at this. Netanyahu puts Iran's nuke on hold, spends a late afternoon discussing Moses. Let me go right over to the article and I'll get into it. This is from the Jerusalem Post. This is obviously from today. It says this. Syria can wait. Iran is not going anywhere. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu set aside two hours Tuesday afternoon to discuss with a group of rabbis and scholars why God did not let Moses pass over to the promised land. And Moses went up to the plains in Moab and a mountain of Nebo, Netanyahu read in his baritone voice from the last chapter of Deuteronomy. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead and Dan and all the uh, Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Yoda. As far as the uttermost sea, I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over there. Now, what Benjamin Netanyahu was asking is, he didn't seem like that was really fair to Moses, considering that he took the people out. And he had some scholars that he invites to the Bible study, and he, they had talked about, when you read the article, these one of the scholars mentioned that God had chosen one man to actually deliver the Jews out of bondage. But then he, told, he chose another leader to actually bring them over. So he used one person specifically to do one thing, and then he used another. Now Joshua actually brought him in. Joshua was a warrior. Joshua took care of the nation uh, in, in its infancy going into the promised land. They needed somebody with the sword at that time, so God used him. So, in light of all of this, I want to assure everybody, at least I'm pretty confident in this, that this man is well aware of Ezekiel chapter 38, and I'm praying that he's well aware of Psalm 83 as well. And knowing that the leader of Israel is involved in a Bible study. When you read the article, I mean, he has the Bible study at his residence. And he invites these leaders in to the Bible study. So he's studying the Bible, which is fantastic. Now, I really believe that you're not going to hear any news about Benjamin Yahoo's thoughts about any specific prophecy. At least I haven't heard anything yet. But I believe that he knows, and the reason why you're not going to hear it in the news that he's saying, well, I know about Ezekiel and I know about Psalm 83, is because he doesn't want to appear to be some religious fanatic who is going to base on what he does for Israel on a prophecy. But I believe in my heart and in my mind is telling me that he knows and he trusts God's word and the judgments that he is making now for his nation are based on what God is showing him in the Bible. Now, we're all going to find out shortly because prophecy is definitely going to be fulfilled and everything we're seeing in the news is pointing to that. All right, so that was the end of that video that I made. And uh, that was a more recent video. Now, when I said we're going to find out soon, I want to play the video today of the, the Benjamin Netanyahu's 
speech at the UN because this speech will tie in all the things that I've been showing you to show you that the Prime Minister of Israel definitely knows about these prophecies and he's mentioned now there's no question about it that he knows because he gave the speech now in the beginning of his speech all the way from the point zero in a speech that I'm showing you with the link he talks about the people of Israel in how they were well let me just play the first part and I'll come back and show you the part where he talks about the prophecies we are an ancient people we date back nearly 4,000 years to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have journeyed through time. We've overcome the greatest of adversities. And we reestablished our sovereign state in our ancestral homeland, the land of Israel. Now, the Jewish people's odyssey through time has taught us two things. Never give up hope. Always remain vigilant. Hope charts the future. Vigilance protects it. Today, our hope for the future is challenged by a nuclear-armed Iran I now I'm going to go over to the section where in this October 1st speech he talks about prophecy. A bludgeoned Jewish people left for dead into a vibrant, thriving nation, defending itself with the courage of modern Maccabees, developing limitless possibilities for the future. In our time... Now listen... The biblical prophecies are being realized. As the prophet Amos said, they shall rebuild ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine. They shall till gardens and eat their fruit. And I will plant them upon their soil, never to be uprooted again. The Shafti Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Israel have come home never to be uprooted again. All right, so now we know definitely the Prime Minister of Israel is in the Bible. We definitely know that he's reading those prophecies, and the prophecies that he just quoted, I have all in my book in detailed facts of how these prophecies were fulfilled, and then even a greater, uh, a greater look at the prophecies from the Old Testament and the New Testament that have been fulfilled by the nation of Israel. God is definitely blessing. But the Prime Minister does know prophecy. He's mentioned prophecy at the UN. The people around the world know now that Benjamin Netanyahu is a man of God, relying on the word of the Lord. Now, in relation to what I know now because of his comments about prophecy and how they're being fulfilled, there's no question in my heart now that Benjamin Netanyahu knows about Ezekiel chapter 38. He's pointed out Iran. Now for those of you who don't know about this prophecy, we see in the 38th chapter of the book of Ezekiel that God shows us the Gog, G-O-G, -G, don't let the, the, the hearing get you a little distracted there. It is not God, it's Gog. Gog is the leader of the Russian invasion of Israel. And he's given us these other names of who or what nations are going to be involved in this attack against Israel. It's Magog, Mitesh, and Tabal comprise modern-day Russia. Persia is Iran. And so Benjamin Netanyahu is pointing out to the problems of Iran. 
And of course, this would probably take in consideration parts of Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, Kush is modern-day Ethiopian Sudan. Put is Libya, which will most likely include Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco. Gomar is eastern Germany. And Beth Togama is Turkey and Armenia. And so when you look at the map, you'll see here's Israel. And according to the prophecy, it tells us that they'll be coming from the uttermost northern parts. You see Russia and these other uh, entities that are named in the prophecies. And of course, you have Libya, Ethiopia that surround them, and then Iran. So they'll be coming in different directions, thinking that they're going to wipe out the nation of Israel. Now, in this speech... He mentions Iran, and there is no question that Benjamin Netanyahu is going to have to do something to stop the nuclear quest. Because he knows, just like Hitler wanted to destroy the nation of Israel, that these people, the supreme leaders who are being put into place, and the presidents that are being put into place, they have an agenda, which the prime minister mentioned. That agenda is to wipe out the nation of Israel and how are they going to do this? Well, and hopefully they can get Barack Obama to, to hold back and to give them more time because this is what they've been doing. So, as you can see from the news, and I'm not going to go to the actual links, but Netanyahu calls the senators to keep pressure on Iran. Obama urges Netanyahu and the U.S. will be clear-eyed and talks toward a Iran bomb. So there's going to have to have something be done about Iran's nuclear quest. And if the United States doesn't do anything about it, I can assure you that Iran is going to have to make this move. Now, whether this move comes during the Feast of Trumpets, which could be huge significantly in Bible prophecy, I don't know if that's going to happen as stewards of the word and stewards of our Lord Jesus, we need to be on the watch on a daily basis. It's one of the commandments. The Lord told us to keep on the watch. This is what he told us. So if he says this, it's for good reason. And the good reason is we will know. We will see the events taking place, whereas other people who don't know the word, they're not going to be watching and they're not going to be ready. And it will be coming as a surprise. So when you know that the future war is coming, without a doubt, Ezekiel 38 war against Israel that deals with Iran and Russia and all those other nations that I've shown you here, and then, of course, the Psalm 83 war, which I believe it will be happening before the Ezekiel war, of which when they're calling for peace and safety. Now, if you watch the video that I showed you today from the United Nations, in that video, which I didn't play, he also addresses the peace talks and talks about security. And this, again, is also a part of prophecy that we see in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, where the Lord shows us in that chapter, he says, when they shall call peace and safety, then, know this, sudden destruction will come as to, upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So, all of these prophecies are right before us. And if you know what to look for, you'll understand these prophecies. You'll understand how urgent these times are and how close these wars that haven't been fulfilled really are. This is Frank DeMora, hoping that I'm leading your heart to Christ and not only lead you there, but I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will grab you today and have you receive him, the Lord Jesus, as your Savior. God bless.